Could you please stand if, if you're online, join us as well. I was buried beneath my shame. Who could carry that kind of weight? It was my tomb till I met you. Let's put our hands together. I was breathing, but not. All my failures I try to hide. It was my doom till I met you. You call my name and I ran out of that grave. Welcome to Grace Chapel. My name is Kim Eifert. I'm part of the staff here, and I am always glad to be with you on a Sunday morning. But on this particular Sunday, super glad to be back. Thank you all so much for your prayers and support while I was out, and I'm just so glad to be here with you this Sunday morning. If you are worshiping with us online, a special welcome to you. Be sure to say hi in the comments and let us know that you're here, um, because otherwise we don't know you're there, and we always want to know who's with us on, on these Sunday mornings. 
Um, if you're new here, I think you can notice that there's these connect cards at the end of your rows. They're on the clipboards. If you're online, if you go to grace380.org, there's a digital version of that. Um, if you just fill that out and hand it to Joshua, me, one of the ushers, or put it in the collection plate later, or fill it out online, we'd love to be able to reach out to you and let you know a little bit more about Grace Chapel and who we are and get to know your story. So um, make sure you do that. If you have been here a thousand times, or if you, um, have, if, even if it's your first time, we'd love for you to fill out your attendance. You can use this QR code or the one on the back of the um, clipboards. You can scan it. If you're online, there's a link in the comments. Um, this just gives us an opportunity to know, again, who's in the room with us on, um, on this Sunday morning. And there is a place there to put in your prayer requests, which will go directly to our pastors. And we think prayer is an important way to be in community together. So be sure to fill that out. Other cool things that we have going on. First thing on my list is this Saturday morning on September 30th at 10 a.m., on the playground right back here, if you've got a little bitty kid, our babies, our toddlers, our pre-K kids, um, we're going to have a play date back there. Our very own Marissa O'Gorman is going to be running, running that. If you don't know who she is, she's over there. Um, her email address is kind of long, but you can email Sarah at grace380.org, and she'll get you connected if you have any questions, if you don't find her after that. Um, this is just going to be a fun time. There's going to be bubbles, which is the best thing. Toys, kid snacks, and probably bring your coffee. Seems like a perfect time for a um, pumpkin spice latte, hang out with the kids, have a good time. Um, the next thing we have is Sunday, it's our kids thing, sing program, which is this coming Friday night on the 29th, or the dates are a little bit flipped here, but there's a reason for that. The kids are going to be practicing for the following Sunday, which is the first, which is our children's um, Sunday in worship. So they're going to sing some songs, have some dinner, hang out with Sarah and have a really good time. You can drop your kids off. That is from 6 to 8 in the fellowship hall. Again, you can email Sarah if you have questions, but mostly drop your kiddos off and have, so they can have a good time and practice for the following Sunday. The following Sunday, that is Children's Sunday and World Communion Sunday. Um, so that's what they're practicing for. The thing you need to know is it's also going to be a potluck lunch. And this is going to be um, in conjunction with World Communion Sunday. We want you to bring something that sort of represents your heritage or your history or who, where your family comes from. And what I will say is that last year I had something else to do and I couldn't stay for this event. And I've heard for a year how amazing it was. So please step up so I can participate in this event that was so amazing and I didn't get to do it last year. That is on Sunday, October 1st. If you bring your dishes before worship, you can bring them into the fellowship hall. So if you're like... What's the logistics? That's the logistics. Um, next thing, pumpkin patch. The, a lot of you in this room don't know that we are a partner, sister, daughter, multi-site campus of Grace Avenue United Methodist Church in Frisco. Their biggest community outreach, which is also then becomes part of our biggest community outreach and biggest fundraiser of the year is the pumpkin patch that happens all through October in Frisco. It is well known, pretty famous. It was in deep clean just this last week. Um, it's a very good time. I don't know what's going on with this microphone. S sounds weird. Um, it is a very good time. You should go visit it any time during the month of October. But on October 21st, that is a Saturday, Grace Chapel is offering the leadership to sort of run the patch that day. So we need you to sign up to volunteer and come help us out that day. It's not hard. It's lots of fun. If you like to drive a hayride, that's one of the most fun things to do. Um, and as I was preparing for this this morning, I realized there's not a lot of ways for you guys to sign up right now unless you go to pumpkinsontheprairie.org, which you're not going to remember. So I will get it on our website, and you can go find it, and we'll get some more communications out. But just remember, October 21st, that's the day we want you to sign up. And uh, Operation Abrigio. This is our ministry where we go to Juarez and build homes for communities there. That trip is taking place November 9th through 12th. Courtney Schultz is still running that program, but if you want to get a because get more information, email Sarah at grace380.org and she'll get connected with Courtney to get more information. And that is the end of the announcements, except to remind you that on the 8th is when we start the new worship schedule, which is going to be 9.30 and 11. That starts on October 8th. And if you haven't signed up to help volunteer, to help coordinate how we're going to manage those two services, the clipboards are still in the hallway. If you're volunteering for anything that happens to do with worship or hospitality or parking lot, I'm going to reach out to you this week, so please sign up because I want to get to Get that all coordinated. And that is our long list of announcements for today, so will you pray with me? Holy, gracious, and creative God, thank you for this day. Thank you for these people who have gathered here seeking something greater than ourselves. There's something profound about this gathering, this coming together, 
of people of very different backgrounds, all of us representing the rich diversity of your creation, each of us embodying your very presence within us. Together, we are more than we are as individuals. Together, we are everything you created us to be, a tapestry of colors and shapes emerging as your artful handiwork. God, as we gather here, we pray for those who are alone. We pray for those who have felt the pain of rejection without a sense of belonging or connection. Make us brave enough to look beyond these walls and to offer an invitation to those that we encounter, not into a building or to an activity, but an invitation to belonging and to connection, an invitation to hope. God, we pray that the work that you call us to, the work of love and the work of acceptance, has ripple effects. As we encounter hatred and division, may we be like Jesus and respond with love. May we that love spread like ripples in the water, reaching far and wide in ways that we may never see. May that love transform this world, breaking through walls, walls of systems and power and shame and greed and judgment, illuming all that is good and beautiful and true and overcoming the darkness. And while we are here today, let us bring our own burdens, freely setting them before you, knowing that you understand our pain, that we are your children and your love abounds for each of us, individually and collectively, each of us an integral part of the whole. Bless our time here today. May our words and songs be true reflection of your love and hope in this world, and may we find comfort in your presence and in our connection with each other. Amen. Dan. I love you, Lord, for your mercy never fails me. All my days I've been held in your hands. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, I will sing of the goodness of God. All my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, yes, I will see the goodness of God. I love your voice. You have led me through the fire in darkest nights. You are close like no other. I know you as a father. I know you as a Yes, I will live in the goodness of God. All my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good with every breath that I am made. Yes, I will see of the goodness of God. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down, I surrender. I'm 
All my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, as I will sing of the goodness of God. seated all over the room. All right, we're going to go ahead and get this out of the way. I am wearing a Dallas Cowboys jersey. Beyond, uh, against my will. There we go. Although I did consent to a friendly wage wager with a couple of the men at Men's Breakfast a couple of weeks ago. And so now I am wearing this too small jersey on a Sunday morning. Um, but there is one silver lining. I give God thanks because I was told that this was a medium. So I, I, I'm just so grateful that God was faithful enough to help me squeeze into this jersey so I could keep my commitment. Um, I, I didn't, we aren't, we're not going that far. I am not a fan. I am, however, willing to root for the home team, so long as they're not playing against my team. Yeah, so, yeah, you know, don't you start, Steve, all right? <laughs> but now I, I, I understand that you all are feeling the pain of the injured uh, roster as well. You guys lost a defensive back, so, you know, good luck. Uh, anyway, so when we do a fashion walk, let's not. All right, so um, for the past couple weeks, we have been in a series essentially about homonyms, right? The homonyms that go along with that sound like so, right? S O S O W S E W. I must admit to you this morning that I grew weary of doing that. So I found a word that has this, a similar meaning as S-E-W, or at least a framework that does something similar. So we're going to focus on that this week. But the past couple weeks, we have talked about what it means for us to be present in our walk with God, right? what it means to be able to properly discern what we hear from God, the Word, right? so that we can go and live out a, live a life that is worshipful and that is honoring God and God's call in our lives. And last week, we continued that conversation a little bit further. Uh, so I just want to share a quick story with you all before we continue. A couple of years ago, as I was pastoring my first church and completing, well, as I was completing my last year of seminary, I didn't get to pastor it yet. I was completing my last year of seminary. I received a call from the district superintendent uh, in the United Methodist Church inviting me to pray about a couple of different ministry options. Uh, and... Before we go any further, this might come as a shock to some of y'all, but pastors in the United Methodist Church are appointed on a year-by-year -year basis, on an annual basis. Um, and those appointments typically begin on July 1st. So assuming I'm in my last, sem my last semester of seminary, sem semester goes through May, I get a call from districts who to consider a couple of different options. I prayed about it and said yes to one of these options. And after I said yes to one of these options, um, Lena was only a couple of weeks old. We visited, or I visited the church because Lena wasn't allowed to be out of the house yet. So I visited this church, and when I showed up there, they presented me with a quilt, a quilt that was made specifically for Lena. 
it was made by one of the mothers of the church. I know some of us may not have grown up in that church culture, but I grew up in a church culture where uh, most of the women over a certain age, you just call them mother so-and-so, right? So we have Mother Nancy. Where's Mother Nancy? I'm just joking. I don't, I don't want to do it. <laughs> um, but no, we, we, you, call them, you call them mother, right, as a form of honor and respect. But really, you talk about the ways in which they nurtured the community, right? And so one of the mothers of the church, she would sew a quilt uh, of patchwork, and then on a Sunday morning, the quilt would go up on the communion rails and the congregation would pray over it together, right? Sometimes those quilts were given to celebrate a new birth. Sometimes those quilts were given uh, because of a specific prayer concern. But those quilts were a reminder that God was present with us and there was a community that was surrounding us in prayer. And a couple of years later, when Caleb was born, we received another quilt. I had planned to bring one of these quilts this morning, but you guys know how it is when you move and everything's in your garage and you just don't feel like sifting through it. And so um, I wasn't able to bring the quilt, with the quilt here today, but when we received that other quilt, um, I recognized something. None of the pieces that were on this quilt, pieces of fabric, were meant to go together. None of the pieces of fabric that were on this quilt were made to go together. It was a work of art, right, but it was patchwork. And sometimes patchwork gets a negative connotation, Right? That, that is thoughtless or not really intentional. But as we talked about before, this quilt was very intentional. And the patchwork was done by a person who cared deeply about the outcome and deeply about the person or family that was going to receive it. Um, and patchwork is a form of needlework, for those of you who are not aware, right, of craft and sewing, in which small pieces of cloth and different designs, colors, and textures are sewn together. Um, and in recent years, patchwork has experienced a sort of resurgence as people are seeking to uh, limit their waste and finding ways to reuse and recycle. And the past couple weeks, we've had these conversations about what to do, how to clarify purpose, and what to expect when we choose to worship God uh, with the core of our being and in everything that we do. But this week, I want to talk a little bit about what it means for us to trust God and live faithfully through events and circumstances that don't seem to go together. What it looks like for us to trust God when the events and circumstances in our lives seem completely unrelated to one another. In the book of Romans, chapter 8, we're going to read verses 28 and, and then 38 and 39. Listen now for a word from the Lord. We know that all things work together for good for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. This is the word of God for the people of God. Let us pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks and praise for the ways in which you have been present in this worship service thus far. We thank you for allowing us to arrive here safely. Thank you for inviting us to be with one another, both on, in person and online. God, we ask that as your spirit has been present through every song and every word that's been spoken up to this point, God, that you would open up our hearts and our minds to receive what your spirit is saying to the church. Speak, Lord, for your children are listening. Speak to our hearts. Speak to our minds. Speak to our circumstances. Speak to our situations. Holy Spirit, have your way. Allow me to play the background as you take center stage. Not my words, but your words. Not my will, but your will be done. It's in the name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. I want to talk to you this morning from the thought stitched to last. Now, I've been thinking about this all week long, and on, I had two ways that I really considered going. Right, One of them was last week I mentioned that I really like boots. When I talked about running, I mentioned I really like boots. Case in point right here. Uh, but... I was going to talk about the construction of different types of boots. And I recognize I may have like one or two boot enthusiasts, and that may be harder for us to grasp as a community. Uh, but Antonella already proved to me this morning that I at least have one other person who cares deeply about the construction of boots. Um, 
And as I considered more deeply, I recognized that we already had some evidence of patchwork in our lives. I mentioned to you the quilt that I received. Has anyone else ever received a quilt, a homemade quilt that was made up of different fabrics? It looked like they didn't go together? Yep. Yeah, great. So this is something that's more accessible. I just want to make sure. I just want to confirm who I'm talking to this morning. Uh, And I recognize when we look at our lives, we read the words in Romans, we look at our lives, we may recognize that it's hard to look back over your life and see how things might come together. Because these things seem unrelated. Different experiences in our lives seem unrelated to one another. And I know it doesn't always feel this way for us, but each patch on our life's quilt is a testimony of God's faithfulness. Each patch on our life's quilt is a testimony of God's faithfulness. Our lives essentially are composed of cumulative experiences that amount to a testimony of who God is of who God has been and who God will be. And many of these patches, they're episodic, right? One thing happens here, it looks completely disjointed from the next season of life. I don't know about y'all, but I can look back over my life and see myself living through a couple of different experiences and sometimes living through my current set of circumstances and trying to figure out how I got here. Because it seems like there was no pathway from that past experience to this current experience. And I think one of the things they remember about these experiences, the thing, one of the things that ties them together is a reminder that God is near. In every single one of our lived experiences, we are reminded that God is near. Even when we are unaware, God is with us. And especially when we are unaware. I'm reminded of the story of a young man named Jacob who was running away from his problems. And as Jacob was running away from his problems, really a conflict he was having with his brother, his brother threatened his life, and he was like, I got to get up out of here. So his mother sent him on with a care package, if you read Genesis 28. And as Jacob was on his journey, he laid underneath the stars with a stone as his pillow and nothing but his cloak to cover him and shield him from the cold of the desert night. And as he slept, he dreamt of a ladder that connected heaven and earth. And on that ladder, angels went freely from one realm to the other. His dreams showed him that God was indeed near. Even in the midst of running away from his problems, of leaving a home that he had come to know and love, he recognizes that God is indeed with him, that God is near. And he learns this in his dreams. And when he first lays down, he's completely unaware of the fact that God is present. I don't know about you, but I, I remember some places in my life where it didn't feel like God was near at all. Living through certain moments, certain tragedies, certain fears, and not being able to identify where God's presence would be in a moment. One of the questions I always struggled with in group gatherings is when people ask, when I check in with my colleagues or friends and they ask, well, where did you see God at this week? And Miss Sarah asked the children that, where did you see God at work this week? Has anybody else ever struggled to answer that question? Where did you see God at work this week? It's like, it's hard to identify when you're living through the circumstances. So Jacob is unable to identify until he lays down. He finds himself asleep, and he wakes up. When he wakes up, Jacob does something very important. He gets up from the place that he was laying in and takes the stone that he used as a pillow and treats it as a foundation for an altar. He treats it as a foundation for an altar, a reminder that God was indeed present, even though he was unaware. That God was indeed present, even though he was unaware. And I know this is going to seem a little elementary, right? But I want us to think about that for a moment. Sometimes a change in perspective is all we need to recognize that God was always there. When Jacob is in the midst of his mess, in the midst of his circumstance, it's hard for him to identify. But when he gets up, when he wakes up from that slumber, he's able to clearly identify where God was. Sometimes when we are living through 
hardship, when we're living through challenges, when we're in the midst of a situation, it's hard to identify where God might be. But when we get to the other side of that circumstance, we can look back and see where God was. I'm reminded of a gospel song that says this. When I look back over my life and I think things over, I can truly say that I've been blessed. I have a testimony. The writer of Romans says that all things work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to God's purposes. I know sometimes it feels like God isn't present because we cannot identify the benefit. The writer says that all things work together for the good. And we talked about this a couple of weeks ago, but one of the struggles is sometimes we identify, we try to define that or translate that as good for us. Right? What is our individual benefit from having gone through this hardship? Surely, God, there is some sort of reward for having lived through this type of tragedy, lived through this pain. Surely on the other side of this pain, there will be comfort. Surely. On the other side of this illness, there will be complete healing. Surely on the other side of this challenge, there will be freedom. We have been taught and conditioned to believe that good means good for us individually. And sometimes the good or the benefit in living through a certain circumstances is not a better outcome for us. Sometimes It is the experience in itself. Sometimes it is having lived through the experience that is the good you can take away from a situation. Not the fact that things are absolutely different or like your life has done a 180 after it, but because you lived through it. All things work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to God's purpose. And like Jacob, many of us have been through things where we just needed a change in perspective. Where we just needed a change in perspective. Have you ever laid your head down on the floor of an empty studio apartment with nothing to keep you warm from the chill of unpaid bills but the, but the warmth of your hopes and dreams? Have you ever looked at the clock while working a minimum wage job and headed to meal town, meal time, only to recognize that when you got to the cashier, your card was declined, even though you strategically ordered from the value menu? Or maybe that's not you. Maybe you continued showing up to class even though you had a past two tuition balance. In the midst of that situation, it is hard to see where God might be. I don't know about you, but I've done the walk of shame from the bursar's office plenty of times in undergrad. And in the midst of that situation, I found myself saying, God, I feel like you brought me here, that you open up these doors, but I can't see where this is sustainable. Sometimes it's hard to identify where God is because things are cutting a little too Close, cutting just a little bit too close. All things work together for the good of those who love God are called according to God's purposes. God's purposes are often not ours. God's purposes are not often the same as ours. A couple of months ago, we talked about God dreams, right? And how when we, when we dream these dreams and begin to live them out, we recognize that they're not for our benefit, but they're for the benefit of the community. Right? When we talked about Galatians last week, it was, it was for the good of all, especially those who are part of the family of faith. But so that you can live out a purpose that benefits others, that leads to a life that is more full for others. Watch this. Here's the promise that Jesus said. Jesus says, I came that they may have life and that more abundantly. I came that you would have life and have it in abundance, not that you individually will live your best life, but that part of living your best life was helping someone else experience freedom and liberation as well. 
these experiences in our lives that seem like they don't go together whatsoever have a common denominator. When you look at a patchwork quilt, the only thing tying these different fabrics together is the vision of the needle worker. The only thing that brings together these fabrics that look like don't, don't go together at all is the vision of the needle worker. Furthermore, not every piece of fabric on a patchwork quilt is brand new. Right? We talked about some people got into patchwork because of reusing and recycling. And I think sometimes as we live through our life's experiences, we think that, oh, I live beyond this, so I need to just discard this memory altogether. Right? My life is no longer as tumultuous as it was before, so I can just discard that memory. I'm no longer struggling through financial hardship or any number of things. I'm no longer struggling in my relationship, so I just discard those experiences altogether. But what if those experiences do indeed serve a purpose? I believe that the patchwork of our lives evidence God's sovereignty. They are evidence of God's sovereignty. Do you know what that means? Do you know what the word sovereignty means? That God is in control. That God is indeed in control of our life's outcomes. Not just the individual episodes of our lives, but of our life's ultimate outcome. That God is indeed in control. That God is in control of weaving together the outcomes that don't seem like they go with one another to accumulate a better end. That God is indeed in control of deciding what goes together and what doesn't. The things to us that seem like we can discard that have no purpose at all, that God has decided that they can be used. If you remember this sort of prophecy in Scripture, it says that the stone that the builders rejected has now become the chief cornerstone. The thing that others thought couldn't be used couldn't be repurposed. God has decided to repurpose, which is evidence of God's sovereignty. Not just God's sovereignty, but God's ability. The common denominator between these patches, if you will, in each of our lives is that we lived through them. They are experiences that we have come through on the other side of. The only thing that relates to your childhood experience and your current experience is the fact that you are the one experiencing it. And for God, that is enough. The things that we've all lived through are connected because God has brought us through them. The writer of Romans goes on to say that I am convinced that nothing can separate us from the love of God, that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of Jesus Christ. The reason that there is nothing that can separate us from the love of Jesus Christ is because in every single one of those turns, I believe that the thread drawing those experience together, experiences together is indeed the love of God. What is drawing these unrelated or seemingly unrelated experiences together is the love of God. Each step we take is a reminder that God is faithful, that it is possible. We talked about this, we talked about grace last week, that it's possible to experience the consequences of our actions, but be able to live beyond them. It is a reminder that God is weaving together every experience as part of a longer journey through each tragedy and celebration, each hardship and triumph, a reminder that God is the one who is weaving it all together, that the only thing that has carried me through each and every single one of these situations and circumstances is indeed the grace of God. From experiences that we cannot remember to experiences we call, recall as if they're happening in this moment, the only thing that is related to that experience and this experience is indeed the grace of God. That is why we in the United Methodist Church still baptize infants. Because our clarity 
on the experience or our recollection of that experience is not what's most important. What's most important is that God was the one who was there weaving it together. That God was the one who was there weaving it together. And that we don't forget that the only reason something beautiful is able to come of the lives we live is because of God's faithfulness. And that through each and every moment, God is weaving together a beautiful quilt that points to God's faithfulness so that others can be invited to trust God as well. And I don't know about you, but it doesn't seem like there's a whole bunch of individual benefit in that one. But there is something to be said about being able to look over your life and point to God's faithfulness so that others can learn how to trust God as well. Because sometimes in order to make it through these situations, what we all really need is a reminder that we are not alone. Let's pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks and praise for being the patchworker, for the one who pieces all things together, for being the one who meets and supplies every single one of our needs, for being with us even when we are unaware, and for continuing to show up even when we fail to say thank you. So thank you, God, for all the ways in which you have woven together our lives, tragedies, and celebrations, our despair and our hopefulness, our peace and our chaos. God, we just ask that you would be glorified in everything so that others can be invited to follow and trust you as well. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
Turn your eyes to the heavens. Our King will return for His own. Every knee will bow. Every tongue will shout. All glory to Jesus alone. be seated. I'm really loving this whole service today, this whole conversation about how we're all bound together and the tapestry of different things creates something bigger and more broad than ourselves and how it's God's love that ties us all together. That is foundational for what I believe in about God and I believe it about this church. And um, this is our patchwork moment when we give back to God what we have been blessed with because no individual can fund our power packs. No individual can fund this church. No individual can reach the community with, um, with, them, with themselves, but we can do it together, bound together by God's love. There are several ways that you can give back to Grace Chapel or give back to God through Grace Chapel. Um, here you can give online um, at grace380.org or you can, there's usually a QR code, but that's okay. It's grace380.org, click on giving. You, that works for everybody. You can mail to the church. Um, at this address that's up here or the address that's on our website or in a moment your ushers are going to come through if you're in the room you can always give that way and um, yeah this is how we do it all together here at Grace Chapel will you pray with me holy God we thank you for these gifts given not out of obligation but with deep gratitude for all that we have we ask you to bless and multiply them allowing us to reach the lonely to feed the hungry and to offer your hope in the face of hopelessness May these gifts be a tool of love. May they be a mechanism for good. And may they be a blessing to the community that surrounds us. Together, bound by your love, is how we do all of these things. Amen. the name above every other name. Yeah. 
I just love this song, guys. I really do. <laughs> and aim. Okay, there we go. All right. Uh, as we leave from this place, whenever from us, God's presence, may we be reminded that God's love is a solid foundation to build our lives on and that God is with us each and every step of the way through every single journey, weaving together an outcome that can exceed our expectations. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, go in peace.